elegant way about doing this, I can tell you that for free. So what's the other problem, Beverly? The manual bilge pump, which is at the stern of the boat, um, just the age I suspect, the rubber when I've been pumping it out, I've worn through the rubber diaphragm. I think it's just brittle. So that needs replacing. Okay, well some good news. It looks like it's just It's just it looks like it's just come off. It's just pulled free. Yeah. Um but I hadn't appreciated just what a bad condition this thing's in actually, so um because this hinge is gone, so what I'll do is I'll take the whole thing off and I'll have a good look at it and decide whether I can fix it or replace it. Yeah, alright. And we really do need a dead cat on a day like this. Yeah. Yeah, because I can't get that in now. It's because it's not on there. Well, I'm pretty convinced that I've already told you this in a previous blog. <laughs> but one of the reasons that you take all the... Um, uh, labels off your cans if you're going to keep them in the bilge is because of this effect that you get every now and then now this is all because of um, the fact that our elbow was spewing water into the bilge but you know okay fair enough it's only what a couple of mils of water it was, but a, it was about two inches of water last night it was two inches of water before uh, the bilge pumps come on but it just em emphasises if you do want to store cans like we do in the bilges, do take the labels off. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> Until they get absolutely sick. Yeah. <laughs> to get to the repair shop, we had to go round Gallows Point. So we unshipped Salty Sausage and we set off. Well, as always, our uh, plans of... Um, gone astray but that's normal but we are in a very nice Chandler's at ABC at Beaumaris so there's quite a few bits and bobs that I'm interested in um, so I have found a vent that I'm interested in um, some clips because uh, I've got broken one of those on board and then I've got a few other bits and bobs, but this is one of the reasons that Bev and I like to come into a Chandler's, because um, it gives you an idea of stuff that you might want. And last but not least is a diaphragm for our manual bilge. We are going to have to measure this up, but at least there's some in stock that we can maybe buy. Tidal streams can be strong at Bulmaris. Since they were going the way we wanted to travel, it made the journey in Salty Sausage an easy one. Getting the shopping back would be a bit harder. We left Sausage secured behind the landing stage and popped into the lifeboats building to thank the crew for helping us the previous night. Well, this is what we're having on Salty Last tonight. Um, we've had a very busy day, but we're going to have a nice glass of wine and we've got lamb chops, chips and peas. But there's a, a really good delicatessen here in Beaumaris. Sadichi or something it's called. Yeah, really recommend the uh, deli. Good food. Um, and great staff. Great staff and um, this lamb chop is from them. And uh, I can tell you now, it's not going to last long. The next day, our new exhaust elbow arrived and we went to collect it. Since it was a strong breeze, we stayed in the lee of Gallows Point. It turned out to be a good decision because it was low tide and it was well out. Sandbanks, gravel and mud were everywhere. But currently um, 
the engineer is uh, taking off the old uh, elbow and we will see the damage um, in all its glory in a bit. You can really see yeah. uh, the holes. Yeah. Um, and then we just flip it over. What had saved the engine was the simple fact that the coolant water had gushed out through the holes after passing through the engine. The water simply wound up in the bilge instead of in the sea. Our new elbow was soon fitted and it was time to test the engine. No. It failed to start, but considering the drenching it received, we were not surprised. We got it going eventually, but maybe we should have paid a bit more attention. As the mechanic left, we noticed that Bomaris had its wind tunnel effect in full swing. So we prepared the boat and settled down for the worst. <laughs> so why do you look a sight, Bev? I've been cleaning out the engine space uh, after the leak. And um, it's a mixture of burnt diesel fumes, oil, water, all sorts of horrible stuff. And so my, my hands are filthy. But the engine space is clean again. And the reason we keep it clean is if anything goes wrong with the engine, it drips in there and we can see it straight away because previously it was clean and now it's dirty. So it even tells us what part of the engine it probably came from. So that works. But just to show you, that came out of the sump under the engine. Yeah, because of all the water, wasn't it, Bev? Yeah. Basically, that's the oil sump. If the, um, if the engine leaks oil, it goes into that so it can contaminate the bilges, which means it can't get pumped into the sea. Um, whenever the bilge pumps empties it. The bilge pumps worked, yay! Um, they reduced the water from about that deep to about that deep and then we just sponged the rest out. Um, but the engine space is clean again and so it's time to do a few other bits and bobs. But uh, as you can see, uh, Bev's uh, cleaned all that out um, and the sump she was going on about. Uh, down there, uh, below the engine, is our engine sump, and this is what was um, had all the oil in. Um, it's not perfectly clean, as you can see, um, but for an engine space, it's not bad. That evening, the wind dropped, and we were treated to the view of some small yachts sailing beside us. Fortunately for us, the timing was wrong to go through the notorious stretch known as the Swellies, and we would have to wait until tomorrow. The following morning, it was quite clear to us, we were not going anywhere. Okay, so we're currently on a um, mooring in Beaumaris, and um, for some bizarre reason, we've decided that we're not going to go off the boat today. But the thing is about this particular inconometer is it's um, it's showing you um, our side-to-side -side motion, but it certainly isn't showing our up and down. Beverly, why have we decided to stay on Salty Last today? Mostly because we can't get off her. <laughs> the weather's sunny, or at least not sunny, but you know it's not raining. It's not chucking it down, but it's blowing an absolute hoolie. You're sheltered there under the spray hood, but it's like four seven four eight here in the um, bay, and um, the tide is going that way, and the wind is going that way, and the result isn't really all that good. And the plus side, the tide is due to change sometime in the next hour, and I'm hoping when it does, this wind over tide thing will just go away, and we'll just have wind to deal with. Yeah. So, explain wind over tide, because you've really got a good example here. Yeah, the tide is moving that way, and the boat would very much like to turn around and face into that tide. But the wind is so strong blowing that way, the boat is facing backside to the tide and its nose to the wind 
And out there, the wind is piling the water up. As the water comes this way, the wind piles the water up. The water goes underneath, the wind pushes the top, and so they fall over each other, making all these breaking waves, we can say. So what I'm hoping is that when the wind and tide are both going the same way, this piling up effect will stop, and the sea will level off, and we'll just have a windy day here. Yeah. Rather than rowing around like a pinball and a pinball machine. Yeah, because uh, I was just showing the uh, viewers uh, our inclinometer. Yeah, well, it was like one, one to one and a half meter breakers rolling up. This is yeah. History, for God's sake. And uh, so, the th here we go. Yeah, you see, this, this is um, this is the up and down. Now the inclinometer doesn't show this up and down motion. Uh, it just shows our side to side motion. Yeah. So it just gives you an idea. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, though, the um, the solar panels are allowing us to um, stay out here and um, be on a mooring and not rely on um, having to start the engine, which is a good idea because for a couple of days the engine was in bits. <laughs> bad weather is beginning to moderate somewhat. The tide is now running with the uh, wind and so the white caps have reduced and the severe bouncing of the boat has reduced. So that's good. The engine has had its service and we're hoping that everything's okay. We still have a couple of concerns about batteries and we will be testing things out for that. But the real crisis on the boat is in here. We're weather bound on board, we can't get off and this is the last loo roll on the boat. Beverly's um, might well be concerned about um, the fact that we've only got one loo roll uh, on, 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 on the lass. But I have to say, my problems is rubbish. I really admire these people who um, produce one small bag of rubbish after five, five weeks. We've barely been on the last for five days and we've already got two bags of rubbish. And uh, I know very well that we've got a half a bag in the bin already. So what have you just been checking, Bev? I've been, oops, I've been checking the arch. Uh, we didn't build it to survive a hurricane. Uh, <laughs> it seems to be all right. Nothing seems to be working loose. Uh, everything seems to be intact. And I'm saying that on the grounds. I'm not gonna hear a large ripping noise followed by a clank right behind me while I'm recording this. Uh, which would be the sort of thing that karma would do to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the arch on a Force 8, Force 9 day. Well, it looks pretty stable, to be honest. It does. It gets a little vibration up and down when you get a big gust, but that's about it. That's all right, then. But I won't, I won't miss the wind tunnel of Bulmaris.